Hey, it's Eric. I am out for a lunchtime ride on a beautiful spring day here on the American River in Sacramento. And with food on my mind, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to talk about food on PBP. You have to put the quarter in the newspaper and pull them all out. No, it's part of me, it's Okay, I'm fine. I think I've talked about this in the past, but uh, there's been quite a few emails going around on the, the email list, people talking about what they should eat and where they can find food and so on. So here are a few thoughts on that. There are basically, oh, I guess four or five ways to get food on PVP. You, first of all, obviously, you are going to need to eat. It's a long ride, so you're going to need to find calories out there somewhere. Now, obviously, everybody has different things that they like, foods that they can that they can eat, things that they can't eat. So that's really, I mean, that's a personal thing that uh, you'll have to deal with yourself. But with that in mind, here's some basic ways to get food on PBP. Now, the most obvious way is at the controls. Uh, every control has some kind of food there, from a full cafeteria to uh, snack food. So you'll always have a chance when you get to a control to find some food. Now, depending on when you go through the control, you may run into lines, uh, particularly if you're in one of the larger groups, like the 90-hour group, you may run into lines there that may slow you down a little bit. Uh, you're also going to have to pay for it. I've heard people complain that the food at the controls cost too much. I'm not sure that's true. Uh, in some ways, it's cheaper. I'll explain that in a minute, but I don't think it costs all that much. I, I recall, I think the last time I I wrote PVP. I think I spent something like a hundred to a hundred and fifty euros on food. You know, over the course of three and a half days. I don't think it's that bad. And of course, the benefit of buying food at the control is you have to go to it anyway. You have to check in to get your card stamped, and uh, the cafeteria is going to be somewhere close to that might be in walking distance, you might have to hop on your bike for, you know, half a minute or so. But the food is there, and you have to stop anyway. Second way you can find food, I've heard people talk about this, is you can find it out on the course. You know, find a, find a store, find a bakery, a, you know, boulangerie, and buy food there. That's possible, and I've done that in a few cases. And, you know, of course, in some of the larger cities, they're also going to be, you know, you might find a McDonald's out there in Brest, from what I've heard, but for the most part, my experience going through the kind of towns that you go through, which are generally, you know, smaller towns, villages and such, uh, there's not a lot of places to buy food. And a lot of those are not going to be on the course. So if you're trying to find, if you're trying to avoid the lines, avoid the cost, whatever, at the controls, uh, and you're thinking, well, I'm just going to go blow past the control and find something, you may not find it. And that could be a problem. You know, you might find yourself riding a fair distance until you do find some place to buy food. And even then, you may end up competing for time at the cashier with you know, local people who are just, they're just out there buying their groceries. I had that happen to me in uh, Tizun. There was a little, little store right there, uh, kind of on the square where we all stopped. And I went in to buy something and had to wait behind a woman who was buying you know, several bags full of groceries. Can't really complain about that. But 
just keep in mind that finding those places away from the controls is not always going to be the best option in terms of saving time. Third way you can you can feed yourself is well feed yourself. Carry all your food on your bike. Now depending on how you plan to get your nutrition that may be possible. Uh, if you're using some kind of you know specific drink mix or something or you know some kind of food like that that's totally possible to do uh, that might be great especially if for some reason you, know, you do have a very limited palate of what you think you can eat and digest and hold down now if you use a drop bag service you can split that food load up into three parts but carry part one on your bike from the beginning eat that all the way through and then load up on part two when you pick up your drop bag the first time and part three the, the third time. That's all possible. Uh, kind of a variation on that would be to have some kind of support vehicle out there that can sort of do the same thing for you. Uh, do your own private sag. They can bring your food for you. Uh, meet you out on the course they can be scouting out places to find things so if you have that you know that's great too all depends on what kind of support you have uh, whether they're willing to put in the time and effort to do that for you because that's a lot of time and effort believe me to follow someone on a ride like this and provide support uh, in some ways is just as hard as riding now speaking of special dietary requirements if you are a vegetarian or a vegan from what I've heard I am not either one of those but from what I've heard it is entirely possible even at the controls to find food that at least uh, purports to meet your dietary requirements you're going to be a little more limited obviously as you, you know, generally are uh, but even though the food at the controls is definitely omnivorous and more in the in the French manner of you know a lot of meat and fish and chicken and sauces and so on uh, you will find things that you can eat there <clears throat> now if you are very strictly vegan uh, in particular you might want to think about the option that I was discussing of bringing your own food with you. Uh, it all depends on what you're what you're willing to accept and how stringent you are about sticking with your preferred diet plan. Now along with food obviously goes drink and at all the controls you are going to find uh, in the cafeteria at least you know pretty full range of things to eat or things to uh, things to drink uh, sodas they will also you have uh, you know, sparkling water sodas whatever so you are going to find a pretty full range of things to drink at the controls from sodas and sparkling water to uh, beer and wine if that works for you on a ride they will also have obviously lots of water there's usually at least one designated water location where you can fill up your bottles. Uh, for what it's worth, I've never had trouble with any of the water in France. Just drink it without thinking about it. So I think you'll be safe from any kind of intestinal issues. If you do run into something intestinal, whether just because something didn't agree with you or your system is not working well at the time again at the controls you're going to find medical help uh, they will do whatever they can to get you back on the bike settle your stomach down replace whatever might be missing in your system so definitely avail yourself of that if you're in need of it uh, I have friends who've done that and they've been very helpful 
they will generally have someone there who can translate English, uh, either the medical personnel themselves or somebody else. They're very good about that at the controls. One thing I left out when I was talking about the controls and sort of pluses and minuses of them, and again, depending on what time you go through the controls, uh, early in the ride, late in the ride, and so on, you may find shortages or maybe not quite the selection of food that was there at the beginning. I've never had too much trouble with that. Uh, maybe the worst case was the last morning of the ride in 2015. Slept for a few hours at uh, Morton on the way back and woke up and wanted to have breakfast and really all there was was uh, pasta with butter on it. But you know, that was great. And then that morning actually we rode a little ways and went through one of those little villages and found a little bakery that had just opened and uh, oh my gosh they had wonderful pastries just out of the oven they had coffee it was, it was fantastic so that was one time when I did find food out of the controls and it was stellar and the final way to get food, and before I forget, and uh, probably the last thing before we stop this video, the last opportunity for food is just out on the course. You will find many, many families out there alongside the, the route who will set up a, a small card table, either out by the side of the road or in their garage or whatever where you can see it, and uh, they will have soft drinks, They'll have juices and water. They'll have cookies and, you know, depending on who they are, they may have pastries. It's generally all offered for free. And they are just out there to help you finish the ride. People on the route love this event. They love the riders. They love supporting us. And uh, they will be there at all times of the day and night. You will be there out somewhere in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night and you'll see you'll see people with the lantern and they're cheering you and offering you coffee and so on fantastic so when those little moments of serendipity come up definitely try and take advantage of it because that's really a main reason for going and doing PVP is just to experience that to meet the people and to show them that you appreciate them as much as they appreciate you. So that's a few words about food. I hope you find wonderful things to eat and drink out on the course. In the meantime, stay safe. Hope you all do well in your qualifiers and finalizing your registration over the next few months. And I will look forward to seeing you in France in about five months. I right, see you then.